potentially exempt transfers, or pets as they are known. What are they? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. Inheritance tax is typically charged on the value of transfers of gifts. These transfers can be either immediately chargeable, such as when you set up a trust, or exempt. For example, when you pay a gift to charity or you transfer something between your spouse. However, many transfers are not immediately exempt and may fall into this category called potentially exempt transfers, which are also known as pets. This simply means that inheritance tax is not payable now, but it may be payable in the future, depending what happens. So broadly speaking, this is when one person transfers something from their name into another person's name. So a typical example may be a parent transfers some cash into their child's possession. So let's go with 50,000 that is transferred from the parent to the child. The person making the gift is the transferor and the person receiving the gift is the transferee. The key point here is that the transferee's estate has increased and the transferor's estate has decreased. So in this point, we've moved something of value. So we've transferred value, which is why inheritance tax is kicking in. Now, something to just highlight here is if that gift was initially a loan of 50,000, maybe they needed help getting a deposit for the house and their parents had gifted them some money and said, it's a loan, we'll want it back at some point. And then at a future date, the parent had said, well, actually, don't worry about paying me back. That's just a gift um, and you can have that money. At the point that the money was forgiven for a loan and became just a gift, at this point would be the date when the pet was officially kind of transferred. A key definition of a pet is that it's got to be from one individual to another individual. So therefore you can't be transferring to a trust, you can't transfer to a company. This is individuals involved. So it's one person to another person. A potentially exempt transfer can be valued in two different ways. And the reason for this is normally at the point of someone's death, everything in their estate is valued at the market value. However, for the potentially exempt transfer, there are two valuation methods because it's the value that it was received at, but it's also the value of the loss of the estate. So if we think about this from the point of view of say some shares have been transferred from one person to another person, then these shares that have been transferred, if they take a individual from a minority shareholder to a majority shareholder, or the other way around, a majority shareholder to a minority shareholder, there may be a different value to those shares compared to just the straight value that would have been there at the point of the demise of the individual. So there is a few different valuation techniques if it's more complicated than cash. Obviously, if it's just cash that's been provided, cash will have theoretically the same value today as at the point of uh, the person's death. The all important question then we've got to ask today is, well, when does a pet, a potentially exempt transfer, stop being chargeable to inheritance tax? And this is where we fall into the seven year rule. And there's a whole video on the seven year rule and how that works. With the general premise being that after seven years of that gift, so if we go back to that original 50,000 that the parent gave the child, after seven years, there's no inheritance tax on that gift of 50,000. An important point to note is that if the seven year rule fails, then it's the person who received the gift that will likely be liable for the inheritance tax on that gift. So on that 50,000, if it fails the seven year rule and unfortunately the parent passes away within three years, there will be 40% tax to pay on that 50,000 potentially. And that would therefore need to be paid by the individual who received the gift. So there is a few things here to be aware of when receiving different sums of money or different gifts from individuals to make sure that you do know where things are. 
sitting. Obviously, if you're getting a gift and the giver is a younger person, touch wood, hopefully they will be alive for the next seven years. If it's someone who's giving a gift at the age of 90, then maybe, depending on how healthy they are, the chances of them living the seven years, there is more scope that they may not live enough years to completely get the pet as a non-taxable transfer. As you can see, this is hopefully a bit of a taster of what the potentially egg tra exempt transfers relate to and also a bit of a warning of where if you don't pass the seven year rule that you may have some additional tax to be paying. Check out the video on the seven year rule to see how it all fits together with what will be liable for the person to pay. But hopefully you can see why these are such a great way of inheritance tax planning and moving things around as you approach the latter years of your lifetime to hopefully minimise any inheritance tax that may become payable by those you leave behind. Hopefully today you've got a better understanding of what a pet is and how it works and why they are so useful in our inheritance tax planning. If you do have any questions then please do leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel and let's make tax less taxing.